Welcome to the Checkered Floor Garage. This is the Kawasaki Vulcan 750 modding series. And today I'm going to show you how I'm going to relocate my voltage regulator and rectifier. First, I want to show you where the factory location is for the voltage regulator. Um, loosen up this screw here for the left-hand side Vulcan 750 side cover, and then pull it out. Here is your junction box, and then behind it is where your battery sits in the battery box. Underneath the battery box, right here, we see this connector. This is your voltage regulator. With the left side exhaust removed, here's another view of where the regulator is. And as you can see, it doesn't really get much airflow. A motorcycle's regulator and rectifier has two functions. First is that it takes the output from your stator, the electrical output, and it regulates that voltage to a nice steady, roughly 14.5 volts, because that's what our charging system and all of the electrical components run off of. Next is the rectification. So again, coming back to the stator, the output of the stator is AC current, but our bike's electrical system runs off of DC. So that has to be rectified from AC to DC. Both of these components, the voltage regulation and the rectification, um, they, they cause heat. So as you can see with the stock location and not getting good airflow, your regulator rectifier can get hot and heat is detrimental to any electrical component. The plan is to relocate the regulator rectifier from underneath the battery box to right over here behind the left side passenger foot peg. And I'm gonna be using this L-shaped bracket to help me out with that. I'm gonna put that behind the bracket using these stock factory bolts. And I'm gonna mount the regulator rectifier right here to get some nice airflow going over it as I ride. First, let's get the battery and the battery box out. That way we could remove the regulator rectifier. To remove the battery, I'm going to start by removing this strap here with the Phillips head screw, and then I'm going to remove the red and the black wires from the battery. I'm going to remove the junction box here with this 10 mil bolt, and then there are four 10 mil bolts holding in the top of the battery box. There's these two here, and then there's these two here. Here's what the other side of the battery box looks like. There's this grounding cable here, and then there's actually a Phillips head. I don't know if that's um, something that a previous owner did. Regardless, they're both 10 mil, so let's remove those. There's actually no need to remove the battery box. You can just keep it in the frame as is. Um, all we have to do is remove those mounting screws to be able to shimmy the battery box left and right, because there's two bolts holding in the regulator down at the bottom. So we're going to go down from underneath the motorcycle and we're going to shimmy this battery box left and right in order to be able to get to the clearance to remove those bolts. Here's what the regulator looks like removed from the bottom of the battery box. But first I wanted to share with you a couple of tips to help you struggle less than I did. Firstly, Remove the wire connector with the regulator still on the battery box. That way it's easier to pull off the wire connector. Take a flathead screwdriver, push in on the nub, and then all you gotta do is grab this white plastic body piece and pull away. And it should come out nice and easy. Next, there are these two 10 mil bolts that go on either side of the regulator like that. In order to get clearance to those bolts, take a 10 mil socket, uh, an extender is helpful too, and shimmy your battery box left and right, and then go down from underneath the motorcycle to get access to each of the two 10 mil bolts and remove them. I also found it helpful to have my back tire removed. Luckily, I had already removed it because I was lubing my splines today. So if you want a video procedure for how to remove the back tire, follow my spline lube procedure. Now, before I play around with this passenger foot peg and this L-shaped bracket, to see where I want my voltage regulator to go. I'm actually just going to clean up a little bit. I'm going to put the battery box and the battery back in and this junction box in as well. For reinstallation of the battery box, make sure that both sides of the battery box are inside of the frame. And then you're going to put your two 10 mil bolts back in there. Here we are on the right side of the Vulcan. The battery box is inside of the frame. And um, now is a good opportunity to check out this ground location, make sure it's nice and clear 
of rust and it's got a good secure contact. With the battery box secured in place, nice and tight, I'm gonna put the junction box in. I'm gonna start with this bottom nub here and just put that in first. Kind of sits right inside this bracket right down there. And then the top here, uh, don't forget this bracket. And basically you line up this hole right here with that hole. And you're gonna to wanna to slide this piece underneath the bracket like this. All right, and then put that 10 mil bolt back and tighten it down nice and secure. The battery goes in with the positive side facing towards the right side of the motorcycle. Make sure that you kind of clear out um, any wires in the way. Put the bracket piece back on. Um, this side, this little loop will go in through this loop here. and then put back in your screw. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then I like to put on my red connectors first, my red wires, and then followed by my ground. One note about this passenger footrest is that these two 10 mil bolts, the top one that goes in there, and then this bottom one, the top one has more threads. It's a longer bolt. The bottom one here is shorter. So keep that in mind. Um, I think I have a really good plan with this L-shaped galvanized metal bracket that I got from my local Ace Hardware. This existing hole already, I'm going to use that, and I'm going to share the uh, mounting location with the top 10 mil bolt of the passenger footrest right here. This passenger footrest is nice and tight. Look how secure this bracket is. It's not going anywhere. Now, what I'm thinking of doing is taking my regulator right here and mounting it just like that, something like that. Now, I'm going to mark the final location with some permanent marker so I know where to drill into this bracket. So that way I can use the, um, the factory 10 mil bolts and then put them right through. And then I'll just go back to my local hardware store and get some nuts for these threads. And next, I wanted to show you what I'm going to do with the, with the wires here to make sure that they are nice and secure and they don't get pinched um, as I'm riding. So I took this wiring harness uh, for the voltage regulator and I looped it behind this grommet hole for your Vulcan 750 side cover right here. And then I looped it through this, um, I don't know if you want to call this like a plastic mud flap back here for your rear tire, but there's a little piece of free space here that I um, looped the wires through. And then to further make sure that the wires don't get caught up or damaged, I will secure it up. I'll protect it with some wire loom protector. I'm going to drill some holes for my regulator bolts. That way I can secure it to the L-shaped bracket. And I'm also going to spray paint my regulator and the L-shaped bracket black. Here's a close-up of the two holes that I'm going to drill. And I'm also going to cut off this excess metal. So here's the approximate line that I'll cut off. And make sure to wear proper safety equipment as well. Protect your ears and your eyes. I broke two drill bits along the way, so make sure that whatever bracket you're using, you got the appropriate drill bits to uh, drill through them. going to do a quick dry test before I spray paint the bracket black. Um, I did use my grinder to smooth out the edges here, make sure that there's something sharp, along with getting rid of the burrs from drilling the holes. So just putting the regulator on there, and I'm really liking how well that's coming out.
While I was waiting for the bracket to dry, I put the rear tire back on and the seat, and then I double checked that everything that I removed was um, secured back up nice and tight. The battery in the battery box, all the electrical connections, the um, axle rod and the main nut for the rear tire, all of the brake torque rods, everything. I also put on some wire loom protector for the wires of the regulator. And now for my favorite part, let's get that bracket up and let's see what this looks like all finished. I'm gonna put the side cover back on, same thing as the other side, align these two plastic bits, with the rubber grommets there and push in. Secure it up with the screw here. Okay. I am going to apply some Loctite to both of these passenger uh, footrest pegs, uh, the bolts, and I'm also going to apply Loctite to the bolts for the regulator, make sure I don't lose anything. One thing I forgot to mention is that when you're attaching your electrical connectors, it's a good idea to pack them with dielectric grease. This is the stuff I use from Permatex, this number 22058. It'll help with sealing and waterproofing, and especially on motorcycles this old, it helps for these connectors to come out nice and smoothly. I really like the way this looks. I actually left the regulator the stock color. I didn't spray paint it or anything. As you're going through this and doing this on your own, make sure that there is clearance for the passenger footrest here to go all the way up and not touch your regulator. Now I'm gonna go for a test drive and measure the temperature of the regulator to see um, what, if, if any, difference is made. Um, so on a cooler spring day, I recorded the temperature of the regulator in the factory location under the battery box, and it was 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The hottest I've seen on a long summer ride was 150. So that'll be the temperature range we're gonna compare it to, 120 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. back from a 30 mile ride and the temperature of my regulator was 112 degrees Fahrenheit. Compare that with the previous location, the stock location, the temperature range would be between 120 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Not only do I see a decrease in the temperature, but it's also way easier to access and replace the regulator. I've even seen some owners on the Vulcan 750 forum keep their um, keep one regulator in the stock location and then they have this one here so that way if anything happens with this one and it fails all you got to do is take off the side cover unplug the connector and you've got a backup regulator just in case if you ever need it if you're considering doing this to your own vulcan check out the vulcan 750 forum at vn750.com because there's been a lot of other owners who have done a similar um, type of modification and you just kind of get to see different ideas as to how they did it Thanks for watching and have a good one.